All right, before this week's video starts, if you didn't see last week's video, I'm giving away the Noak the Macro Legend on our first live stream in two years, April the 9th between 7 and 9 p.m. Well, this week I'm starting off the show with another giveaway prize that we're going to do, courtesy of my good friends over at Kelly Co. Metal Detectors. They're giving away a whole prize package, starting off with their Stew Line 36-inch long handle tea shovel. This thing is an 8-inch long heat-treated blade with a super wide foot stomping area, whatever you call that area, serrated edges on both sides to rip through roots, and it's bright white color so you will not lose it in the field. They're also including their Red Elite Detector Carry Bag. It's 52 inches long, 16 inches wide, super soft padding inside, but a heavy duty, durable nylon on the outside. It's got two zippered 10 by 14 inch pockets. You can carry all sorts of accessories around. Now mine's a little dirty because I use it whenever we travel, but yours will be brand new. They're also throwing in a few accessories too, like a three pocket finds pouch with a mesh bottom so dirt or water will drain out. And they're even throwing in Doug Special, the retractable brush with the nylon bristles on one side, the brass on the other side, and the metal pick that I lovingly call the Snaggletooth brush. But man, to include the long handle shovel, that is an incredible prize pack. Who doesn't need a shovel? It's one of the most requested things I get, Charlie. So if you guys want a shot at this one, you're gonna put Kelly Co. in the comments of this video down below. During the live stream, again, April the 9th, 7 to 9 p.m., I'm gonna come back to this video. I'm gonna use a random comment picker. It's gonna pick one winner. You win the whole Kelly Co. prize pack. So make sure you guys put Kelly Co. in the comments down below. And if you didn't enter in last week's, you can go back to last week's video and put Legend in for a shot at the Noak the Macro Legend Detector. Every week till April the 9th, we're giving away more prizes. But the Kelly Co. prize pack, man, it's gonna be a good one. All right, let's get to it. We got an amazing field today. I don't want to hold up any longer. See you guys later. What's up, guys? Court order here. Out today at a spot that Charlie got. It's an incredible old house. Charlie, what's it go back to? Mid-1700s. Mid-1700s. That's an amazing old smoke house. We're out today, of course, me, P.A. Pirate Paul, Just Silver Joe, Digger Drew, who lives in this house, who's going to join us today. He's got an AT Max he's going to use. Of course, Charlie, the Herod Drought Hunter, and Dog Tag Doug, Mexican Doug, Jane Fodden Doug. We're going to hit the fields. We're going to hit the yard. And we're going to try to find some incredible things. So back in the first dig. See you guys soon. Yeah. Later. Yeah. All right, Doug, I'm doing my first dig with the legend, the yeah. non-prototype legend. This is the real deal the legend, real. like like the retail right. uh, legend. And uh, I did a video on it. Hopefully it's out before this video. But just so people know, I'm in custom mode. I have it in field, uh, but I do have this field set up with four tones. I have my sensitivity at 29. I'm starting off in multi one. And uh, I did... Uh, open up the machine a little bit by default field has 11 segments notched out i only have eight and we're 10 feet from the cars yeah now this is a 27 28 which is a mid-tone right on my machine doug swung over it also with his equinox and i got half of that in numbers 13 12 14 that low that low yeah yes. so i don't think this is going to be a good target but whenever you start off with a new machine you got to dig a lot of signals to learn the machine you, you got to fi find out what those numbers equate to and as you can see on my ferro check bar i'm getting a little bit of iron showing up on the left hand side right here so there is a little bit of ferrous material in this signal too now i'm not going to live dig it but i'm going to dig it up and see what it is because that's how we all learn all right let's see what we got all right, Doug, the uh, first hole with the uh, retail legend machine is out of the ground. And as suspected, it's not anything great, but you're learning the machine. Yeah. It is a piece of iron. It's pretty large. Don't really know what it is. Looks like a piece of a tractor part. Yeah, something like that. Uh, but it picked up the ferrous. Uh, it did give me a... The t I'm not used to the tones yet. It sounded like a high tone. It might be a mid tone. I got to right. get used to it because I customized all the pitches and everything. And any machine, when you go over a hole like that, you're going to get a better. You're going to get a better tone of the negative space. But it did show me on the Ferris meter that there was iron. This is clearly iron. And uh, hey, it's a good learning pattern. I try to use that information, add it to the uh, memory bank. So going forward, maybe I dig less of this. Yep. But you got to dig trash to learn any new machine. Luckily, we're close enough to the cars. I'm going to put you this right in the car. I don't want to carry there, it all day. <laughs> but uh, hey, first find of the legend. We'll keep going see what else we can get. All right. 
All right, Joe's got himself a good find. We're actually working towards the house, so hopefully we'll get more where there's more activity. And Joe said he's got a button. I wanted to swing over it with my machine because I haven't heard a button yet. I'm, I'm luckily I'm digging these tones. I just haven't swung over a button like that. Oh, oh, is that a uh, a blowhole? It looks like a yep. big fat blowhole button. Yes. Those are old, Joe. In this house, Charlie said it goes back to the early to mid 1700s. So there could really be a lot here. But so far, the field's been pretty barren. At least this first field. Definitely blowhole. Yep. You see the blow? That's a good size one too. Yeah, Usually blowholes are smaller than that. Yeah, you've really got a winner there. Yeah, I can't see the blowholes yet, but there'd be two holes on each yep. side of the shank, and they use them so when they they welded it together, it didn't explode. It would yeah. let the air out. Yeah, let the wind out. Yep. And the ones before this that didn't have the blowholes, Joe, that actually exploded, they're even older. But I mean, it's definitely colonial yeah. period. Uh, yeah, that's an awesome. That's a good size too. Usually they're a little smaller. And it wasn't than even this. deep. It was right right here. I mean. You're only talking like two, three inches. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? That sometimes you yeah. could be in a farm field, Joe, and plop a 1700s coin that's like just under the surface. Yeah, it's amazing. I got a bunch of them signals that was junk. Well, yeah, I dig a lot of these. I'm getting anything. a lot of aluminum scrap. Yeah. But, hey, it's nice to know they're here, man. Gives All me hope. Right. Awesome job. Way to go. This is a bouncy mid-tone. And you can see every once in a while, I do get a little bit of lighting up on the left-hand side where the ferro check is. Swing this way. Now, don't forget this machine is a 1 to 60 VDI, so that 33, 34 is a mid tone. Let's dig it up and see what it is. I got this little pocket knife. Now, it's kind of mangled and bent up there, but it's pretty much complete. Both sides, this outside is probably some sort of brass or copper. There might be a, usually there's a manufacturer on one side, Victorinox, or maybe some sort of scout knife. That's a good old artifact, maybe only from the 30s or 40s, but I'll take it, that's a nice one. All right, well, hey, a cool old pocket knife, I will put it in the bag. I'm gonna put the banana in the hole for this fine, because I don't wanna give the banana up on some aluminum. The ground might think I want that all day but I'll put it in the ground for that pocket knife. We're gonna work up towards the old farmhouse and hopefully we'll have a little more activity because these fields are kind of barren of any signal. So hopefully the banana will do its job. Let's keep going. All right, Doug, I got the first super good find with the new Legend machine. This was really deep. I barely heard it. It was very faint, 34, 35 mid-tone again. So I didn't do a live dig on it uh -huh. and it was probably about eight inches down. And it took Can me forever. Over just yeah, it's right there. Wow, and that, that's you a low on tone on mine. A, a 15, 34, yeah. like a lower mid-tone. And it popped out, and at first I thought it was a coin, and then I remembered what the number was, so I think it's gonna be a button. I think it's gonna be oh, a Tomback yeah. button, Doug. Looks like it's got the shank still. Well, I'm, I'm trying to knock the dirt out carefully. If there's a shank, I don't wanna break it off. Break it off. Let me toothbrush it so I don't knock the shank off because I think it's going to be a complete tomback and sometimes they have those etchings on there like the Tudor Rose and stuff. Uh -huh. So let me clean it up carefully and we're going to get a good look at it. All right, there's the tomback button. This was tough to clean up. It's an odd material, but there is an image on there going around the outside. You can kind of see it in the sun. It's going all the way around like a, like a big around, star. It's, yeah, around that was hand etched. And this also goes back to the 1700s. The back cleaned up a little better. The shank is busted off, and you can see that convex uh, little groove to it, so it wasn't right. just flat across. But I love the design. I'm just gonna have to kind of clean it up a little better so you can really see it. But when the sun hits it from certain angles, you can kind of see it popping through. That's really nice. Yeah, that was a really yeah. good find there. First good find from the legend. And let the record show that all the busting you give me about this uh, brush, what did you use to well, clean it I up? Well, I left my brush in the car. I had to use a snaggle tooth brush, but you know, desperate means. Desperate measures. I love that, that's a great find. That is beautiful. Cool. And to have it in that good a shape is just And not amazing. broken, you know, often tombacks oh. are easily broken. Yep. All, one, one plow hit would destroy it. That's amazing. Nice 32, 33. Another mid-tone, but I don't hear any of those Klingani grunts. 
This could be a button or something. Let's take a look. I right, dug this one was coming up like around a 30. I'm not familiar with all the coin signals on the machine. Uh -huh. So I dug down maybe about three or four inches and it stuck to one of these little clumps. Oh, yeah. It's right there. It's in a little miniature clump, Joe. And I think it's gonna be an Indian. That's, that looks fat. It does look fat. Might be a fat yeah. Indian. We were talking about the Indians, remember? Jay? Well, it came up in the 30s and I'm not familiar Which with- Which equates to like a 14 or 15 yep, on- that, That's when it, the fatties come up. I see one cent. That's an Indian. It's a fatty Indian, I think, Jason. All right, I see one cent on this side. That's in pretty good oh, is shape. Is that a shield or not? No, there's no shield. It's uh, a 59. 59. I can see the shield on the back. Well, I can see the lack of a shield on the back. <laughs> I can see the shield that's not there. There'd be a shield up at the top if it was any other fatty. Only the 59s did not have a shield. That's amazing. Let me brush it off so I can make it look real pretty. I left my toothbrush in the car. I got to use Doug's snaggle brush, but beggars can't be choosers. Oh, look who joined us. PA Pirate Paul. Let's brush this up. Joe, you can clean it for me if you don't mind. Nope. Awesome. Oh, nice. All right, Joe cleaned it up for me. Like I said, we're doing right near the house. And I'll tell you my theory in a second, Doug. And you can even see the date, 18... 59. Is it 59? Yeah, it's don't have those shields. In my eyes, it almost looks like a 60. Oh, it did when I first cleaned it. Dead. Well, if it has no shield. It no shield. Wow, that's got amazing detail, Joe. It is in beautiful That's shape. one of the best fatties I may have ever found. That gives me hope that if I get a large center or something, they might be in good shape too. My theory, Paul, and I don't know if it's gonna be accurate or not, you see the house right there in the front door. And if you take a straight line, in that tree line there is a little creek where they would have had to get water to wash their clothes, to drink. So they may have come out that front door and this would have been their walking path to go back and forth to that little creek to get water. That was barren out there. And as we got in here, it's you got a button, I got a button, I got a road. coin. There's so we might concentrate on that walking path and who knows, it's as good a theory as any other, right? All right, we're heading right up near the house and the uh, homeowner's son's joining us, Charlie, give him a detector. And Joe said he might have himself a token and that could be a, almost anything if that's true. Oh, it looks large scent size. Which would be like a Chuck E. Cheese one or something. <laughs> I, I would die. It is. is it really? It is. They're all dated, though. Some of the ones from the 1970s are pretty valuable. Yours is 2005. 2005. Okay. It's barely worth it. <laughs> and of course yours is. <laughs> Man, we get on a colonial house and Joe I'm, gets a I'm Chuck E. Like Cheese token. Yeah, yeah. From uh, 05. When a kid can be a kid, Joe. I still have some of mine from Chuck E. Cheese from the 80s. Hey, it's still a good token, brother. <laughs> Too bad it wasn't 200 years older. <laughs> Way to go, Joe. Thank you, man. All right, we're working around the front of the house. Everybody's out here behind me, and Paul said he's got a Tootsie toy, but he may have hit it with his shovel. Oh, it looks complete, Paul. Yeah, I hit the front. It's oh, like oh, is it busted stick. if I pick it up? Yeah, oh, I see you chopped it in half. What's you it, got... like a roadster, Paul? Looks like, yep, maybe? that's what it was, an old roadster. roadster. It's probably from the 60s, maybe the 50s. There's, now there's almost two of them. You see what happened now, Paul, when you bust my chops about cutting that real yeah, in half? The real. <laughs> <laughs> but we both found both pieces of our chopped in half fine. Is it red? Do you see any color coming through? Uh, green, maybe. Green? Green or blue. It's a cool find. I love the old Tootsies, job, even if you did hit it. You yeah. have to break it in half totally in your bag. Hey, good job, brother. Thank you. All right, Joe's got something good. We're up into the house. Now we're all going to try the yard. We should get on a lot more signals. There's a lot more activity. And Joe got an interesting relic here. Yeah, I think it's an old lock. Piece of half of it. That is super cool, Joe. Yeah. I love... That's got to be Victorian, I would yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. Maybe late 1800s. I think that would have been the keyhole off mm -hmm. some sort of an old lock, maybe for a door. Yeah, to see... I was wondering if it could have even been like a yeah. giant padlock. Up, yeah. Doug's got something. It's a shackle to it. It's, it's oh, it it's is a square. padlock. Yeah, I thought it might have been a padlock. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's yeah, it. that's the pad. Wow, how crazy is that? Were you close to him, Joe? Right no. Here. Right here. That's where I'm at. Yeah, there's the padlock. Wow. Complete. Found by two guys. That yeah, there's, yeah, there's one no. more piece in the back. Remember that? That's you guys got to arm wrestle over it. Uh, you can have well, it's a nice shackle, too. I love how it's squared off. Yeah. About five inches. Look at that, Charlie. 
from the same block. Yeah, that's a beautiful little and design. About 12 feet apart. Yeah, about 12 yeah. feet apart. They tag teamed and got it. But that's amazing. I love the design on it. We could have beat Gorilla Monsoon and Haystacks Cat. <laughs> that would have been one heck of a tag team. <laughs> Well, we, we both work together on it. You work it. together on it? Yeah. Charlie and Drew, who lives here in the house, just came up with this awesome find, and it's a beautifully ornate spoon. Now, this one's stainless steel, so it's not super old. I love the design on it. It's got a great pattern, and I asked Drew, I said, do you recognize the design? And he said, yeah, I think my grandpa has a set of them inside. So that'll be a nice little return you can go give to him. The, the, I think re he just came back from Florida. Yep, so. make the uh, collection complete again. So that's great. Hey, good job, guys, both of you. All right, there's a nice high tone. My headphones are on, so I'm holding them close to my face so you can hear it. This could be a modern coin. No grunts. Let's dig up and see what we got. All right, Doug, the guy told us this used to be the old sandbox, and Paul already found a Tootsie toy. I got this one, check this out. This is an old car. It's a Hot Wheel car. I already rubbed the bottom of it. But you know what I love about it, Doug? This might be a first for me. If I try to clean the wheels off, this is an old red line. Now the red lines were the early super collectible Hot Wheels that have a red line going around the tire. Yeah, I I'm can not... see it on that Do one. Do you see a red line? Or is that rusty? Uh, maybe you're right. Just. Clean it. Oh, God, just the nail. <laughs> My Why don't have a honey badger? Just throw it in his den. Yeah. <laughs> it's reddish all around all, each of the wheels. Well, a red line would have a red line going around the tire. And a white was, wall, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a red line, I think. Well, I'll get over here. <laughs> but I don't know if you're right, if that's just rust or if that is the red line going around. Yeah, it. No, no, no. Now, this, even though it's a Hot Wheel, this is oh. probably from the 60s, I would think. But I'm sure there'll be car people that comment shape. and really tell me. Shape. But yeah, I'm not sure if those around the wheel are red lines or rust red. No, because they're all, it, it's got a red dot in the middle. I can see red all through here. Yeah, I think it is, might be a red line. Of course, Paul's not going to come over. Oh, well, he, if he wants it. So that could be my first ever red line Hot Wheel. You know, nice. granted, not super old, but very collectible in the toy car genre. genre. <laughs> I love that word. All right, Char uh, Doug just called me over. He's got a Tootsie in his hand. I was all ready to film it, but Doug, Charlie just yelled out he's got a gun. Go. So your is Tootsie's going to have to hold on. Oh, no, yeah. All right. Charlie said gun. If it's real, should I put you out of your misery? <laughs> Let me see. Like a handgun, Charlie? I don't know. There it is. Oh, wow. Drew and I flipped it over. And there it is. I think it might be a cap gun. It's cool though. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> Is that yours when you were a little kid? I no yeah, it's a cap gun. It says smoky right there, Charlie. Can you see uh, it's smoky? Okay. Yeah, I see it. Yep. And it doesn't feel very heavy. Oh, there's a there's a horse head right there too. Look, look at that, Charlie. In the handle. Right there. Can you see that? I think it's like a horse's head. Yes. Right there. Yes, I do see. I, I don't know what kind. I'm not sure if I have it upside be. down or not. Right there. It's either a horse or a really ugly person. It rang up 81 on the Equinox. Is that a horse, Drew? You got young eyes, or is that a really ugly guy? <laughs> that was like... If you don't know what an ugly guy looks like, just turn around. <laughs> there's, a couple, there's a couple over there. A couple, couple of ugly guys over there. But anyway, it popped out, and that, yeah, it's kind of cool. That's yeah, you fine. mind if we brush but, this down and no, get a we'll good look at it? Because yeah, that's we'll, an yeah. exceptional condition yeah. for an old handgun. And I think this might even be like from the 40s or 50s. Yeah. Let's get a good look at it. Okay. All right, there is the gun found by Charlie and Drew, the hot team on the day. You can see it says smoky right there. We tried to clean it up with right. just a gentle brush. What I thought was a horse is actually a bull. You can see his horns sticking out sideways, left and right. And that bull is on both sides. This side's a little rustier. But that's an amazing it's little very, uh, pea shooter. Very tiny. Probably too. from the 40s or 50s, if I had to guess. Yeah. There's a good chance Drew it was your granddad's if this house has been in the family for a, this is a long time. Well, that's an awesome find. Congratulations, guys. Yeah. Well yeah, done. Thank you. Old captain. All right, we are all out here. Paul's on his knees over there digging. Joe is right behind me. Charlie and Drew just got a really cool gun. So I'm coming back over to check out Doug's toy car. 
That's yeah. definitely a... Yep, that's going to be a touchy. Now, do you see color coming through on yours? I, no. It's kind of like a drab. Uh, looks like a rumble seed here, so it is an old, older vintage. Oh, we'll take a look at it later, but I'm sure it's going to be another old one. That's uh, like three or four cool old cars just yeah. in the front yard. Let's hope we can get some stuff maybe 200 years even older than that. But we're off to a good start. Well done. I got something kind of weird, Joe. <laughs> this is a 27 about maybe seven inches deep. And this thing popped out. And I think it's plastic. It might be a measuring tape. It might be. A, yeah, it might have a ruler or something there. You know, tape measure. Farmers Fertilizer Works. I wonder what's inside it. Looks like I think you put James in. Oh, it's got some weight to it, Joe. Can you uh, try sure. to open that up? You think it's a bank? It could be. They put coins in there or something. I thought it might have been a uh, measuring tape. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, it, it's... I'm trying to think what I can open it with. You can use my lash if you want. Yeah. But I don't see anywhere a measuring tape would come out. Yeah, no, I don't oh, either. Wait, no, wait me. Right there. Oh, it is a measuring yep. tape. All right. That's what that. Darn. That was almost a bank. Oh. Almost a bank. I don't even know if that's that old. I wonder if Charlie heard of uh, Farmer's Fertilizer. <coughs> Probably. It's got the address on there, I think. 45, oh no, 45 good as, 45 good as the best. Hmm. I don't know what that means, but. Yeah. Oh well, not a bank. All right, Charlie, Harley, and Drew, the combination has been deadly so far. <laughs> Charlie got himself a Tomback button. It's, it's small. It's, it's, oh yeah, look at that shiny material on it. Should clean up nice. Yeah. The material they made Tomback with, there was tin in it, there was arsenic and things like that, so it still keeps that shiny sheen in the ground, even though this might be 200 some years old. Yeah. Colonial days. Yep. Yeah. And there would be a shank on the back, it might be missing. This is kind of small, could have been a cuff button, but this is super old. This is the kind of treasures we're looking for, Drew. So hopefully we'll find more of them. That's a great find, Charlie. Thank you. Yep. Way to go. See, Drew, on the back, there's a shank. All right, we just keep getting on the old cars. <laughs> around this tree, there's a lot of cars around this tree. Doug's still cleaning up his Tootsie, and Joe just came over with one. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> like an old army. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Some kind of... I'm guessing this isn't quite old. as old. Looks like nah, it looks dump, like a plastic bottom. Truck. Yeah. Ooh. Made in England. It's a Lesney. Lesney. I can see it. Yep, made in England by Lesney. And there's a name on it, too. Sure does. That has all the wheels all on the, and everything, too. Look, look at that. I can't read that word right there. All the there. busting I get from this thing, it... Roll well, something mess with you, Doug, <laughs> Well, hey, good job, Joe. I like the old Lesneys. They make a nice little uh, display shelf uh, in your house. Oh, yeah, it's clean up nice. And Doug is still working that. Can I see that again, Doug? How, <laughs> yeah, the progress? Yeah, cleaning yeah, that's up nicely. beautiful, Dougie. They that, clean up real nice. Yeah, that is very sharp. All right, you'd think we're at the park, but we're still in front of this colonial house. But now I think every single guy's got an old car or an old truck. It's a Paul's Porsche got... 930 or a 911. Let's see. Yeah, 911, 1974, but that doesn't mean it's the date it was made. Yeah, it does. It does? Yeah. yeah. I think it does. I thought that maybe that was the year of the car. Like this could be a 74 Porsche. Uh, well, it usually uh, has a date manufacturer too. I'm not sure, maybe you're right. I'm just looking to see if it could have red wheels on it. Because they normally don't tell you the date of the car. They just tell you the date of when it was made. Well, you don't normally say it's a 74 Porsche 911. You know what I mean? Yeah. Paul hey, nice find, Paul. Not super old, but we got a nice collection going on the day. Right. Cool. Everything's there, at least. Charlie's got an 8 Real. Yeah, yeah. It's the same size as the one Doug found. <laughs> <laughs> it's the aluminum version. But oh look at this gosh. thing Doug got. It's like an old pickup truck. Is it you yellow? Know, that could be a red line. I you think? No. Uh, we are in red line era, and there's a lot of them around. Like I said, this he said this was the old sandbox. So there's going to be cars everywhere. Yeah, uh, some sort of a worker truck. Might have been like a tow vehicle. Something like that. Put a, oh yeah, hitch. Hitch on there. What do you call it? A three wheel? Third the wheel? Fifth wheel. Fifth wheel. Yeah. Made in England by Lesney, Doug, 1972. Yep. It's like four Lesneys, four or five Hot Wheels, and two Tut or three Tootsies. Oh, Here's look the at last that. one I got. Oh, look at that little one. Oh, it's busted. 
This one here. I yeah, got another one got too. I didn't show. Oh, nice. You got a Porsche. So we'll line them all up at the end and show all the old cars. But that's an interesting truck. Well done. So Doug just said he's got something really good. What's crazy, Doug, is we're near this colonial house, but we're finding the era things like we're at the field of a thousand holes. <laughs> exactly. Let's see what he's got. Well, I think we found the toy box. Uh, the oh, where they play box Absolutely. or whatever was here. Oh wow! Look at that. Almost like uh, Korean War era. Wow, it's got some weight to it too. Yes, it does. It's wow, light. I can't believe you didn't hit it with that's your uh, shovel. Oh, you know me. I'm very good pinpointer. That's true. That's true. You are the man. I'm surprised. Surprised it only ha it has both wings. Looks like a, a wheel there, or well, or it, a couple it, of it them, had huh? to land, right? Let's see if there's a name on it. Spitfire. Spitfire. Oh, that's a British plane. Zymax Spitfire Nine. I guess Zymax is a company, and the Spitfire is the name of the plane. this old plane. That's super cool. Is that, that green? Is cool. What's that? Is it green? It's, yeah, it's. Uh, I love. It looks army. like a little. Uh, it might even be like a like a water landing. Uh, well, uh, it, uh, it wouldn't have wheels. It would have pontoons. Well, maybe it does both. It's an omni omnivore. <laughs> Yeah, it eats omnis. <laughs> Look at that, Charlie. Oh, wow. Come on, that's, that's cool. cool. Doug called it an omnivore. I you did. <laughs> oh, gosh. Wait till the video comes out and we will know who was. I just came back from Hawaii. They had planes like this. Really? On plane? Yeah, this looks like, like oh. one is uh, zero. Uh, it's a Spitfire 9. Is that what, is that what you took to Hawaii? Spitfire, Spitfire 9? 9? Yeah. But they had it on display from World War II. Yeah. Really? Yeah, down Hawaii. I'm going to Google it. I said it was around around Korean. Or, yeah. but yeah. it could be uh, it late. was made yeah. by zymox doesn't zymox yeah. make like allergy medicine <laughs> <laughs> but that's an awesome find dog congratulations yeah. man yeah, oh yeah. and another one from joe yeah. can you imagine the the little kid going in say mom i need some more cars i and, know how many times you go to the store to buy more vehicles we must she have found said, a what dozen did you of do them all the other ones also owned a toy store he's so alive ernie oh yeah he died a millionaire that's why he died a millionaire he that's amazing oh, yeah God. he's just seen all the max box i got out there <laughs> yeah for an hour is that cool oh whoa dougie all right, we looked up Doug's plane, that Z, uh, it was Xylmox. We looked it up. Uh, it's aluminum, cast aluminum. Spitfire. A Spitfire. And World then Joe II, got maybe. this incredible Matchbox uh, Thunderbird. Joe, you saw Grease, right? Absolutely. It got overhead lifters and four bow floor, oh yeah. <laughs> Speed racer. No, <laughs> you never saw knows, Grease? The word Come on, that was a great John Travolta movie. <laughs> I know. I oh, watched it. I just ran like what's the word times. Thunderbird? Jeez, I'm the only one that knows the song. So what's Great the job. other? Uh, what's the following line? Grease Lightning. Yeah, it's, it's the Grease, Grease Lightning, Lightning, Lightning song. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's disheartening, Doug. Well, we might have ended our streak of multi-thousand dollar coins that we've been on lately. But you know what? It was a super old place and we had a shot at almost anything. And don't forget, if you guys want a shot at the Kelly Co. prize pack with the Stu Line T-Handle Shovel, the Red Elite Detector Bag, and all the other accessories that we're going to give away on our April 9th live stream, just make sure you put Kelly Co. in the comments of this video so I can pick it. You got to be in the stream to win. It's going to be a party and it's not a party if you guys aren't there. And of course, if you can't wait and you need to get a detector, a pinpointer, a shovel, anything you need, shoot me an email, quarter hoarder, yahoo.com. Let me know where you live, what your budget is, what kind of terrain you're going to be hunting. I'll help pick out the best gear so you can get out and find some of the incredible things like we do every single week. I'm telling you, you're going to love it. It's a hobby of champions. Otherwise, thanks for watching, everybody. Happy hunting, and I will see you on the next one. Later.